This episode of Torpreneur is sponsored by Ventrata. Ventrata is a proven and versatile booking platform built for high-volume tours and attractions. With contactless booking, payment, and check-in solutions, they can get your business back up and running quickly while keeping your staff and customers safe. For more, go to ventrata.com. Welcome to the Torpreneur Podcast. Travel industry veteran Shane Whaley will take you on a journey with fellow torpreneurs, sharing their tips, ideas, insights, and success stories to inspire you to make your tour business the best it can be. And now, here is your host, Shane Whaley. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Some of you emailed in asking why I don't do the What I Learned This Week episodes anymore. And I wanted to record a very quick update on some things I've been thinking about as we get into 2021. Can you believe it's February already? In one way, I'm really happy because with each month that passes, hopefully it's getting us towards getting the vaccine and some normality. But it's really tragic that I'm I'm wishing my life away. I stopped the what I learned this week because I felt I was getting a little bit overwhelmed. And over the Christmas holidays, I did a lot of thinking. And I asked myself, for instance, where can I improve in 2021? What went well in 2020? What would I do if I had that time again? And I'll be honest with you, in 2020, I signed up for way too many courses, bought too many books bought too many uh, webinars or registered for too many webinars. And what happened, and I suffer from this, is that shiny object syndrome. So spent good money on a Facebook ads course. It's something I really want to learn. And look, a week later, a copywriting course comes out. Oh, I need to improve my copywriting because I want people to listen to an episode or subscribe to the brief. I need to learn that. I'll go do that course. And then look, here's an Instagram Reels course. And oh, look, here's a... Osmo camera that's on sale on Black Friday. Let's go buy that. I buy that. Then I'm all into, okay, now I need to learn how to be a video editor. And when I look back over the year, the money I'd spent, the courses I signed up for, I asked myself, what do I really need to learn now in 2021 as we wait for normality? What do I need to learn to improve upon to improve my business, which is a media producer, right? And it's very clear to me that, yes, in my podcasting career, so with all the other podcasts that I do, I am 400 plus interviews in, which I'm very proud of. But I don't think I've really sat down and really studied the art of interviewing. Yes, I listen to interviewers. I'll take away a good question. I'll doff my hat to a good host but am I really learning? Am I really learning my craft? Now, there's not really courses out there. Well, I guess there are some people selling how to interview courses. I saw one the other day, actually, for $499. And I just thought, really, do you really need that? Why not go and buy a ton of books on the subject? Why not listen to more interviews and episodes and really hone your craft? It's far better for me as a podcast producer and a host to be a better interviewer. That's what you want from me. And yeah, you love it if I know more about Facebook ads because that will help me in a conversation with experts. But I need to have the right questions. I need to be able to probe better when I do have an expert on. And I really appreciate the feedback on this. I always say with people who write in and say they enjoy the show, I'm like, look, if ever there's a question I didn't ask a guest... Don't, you know, don't uh, feel awkward. Write to me. I won't be offended. Say, I wish you'd asked about A, B, and C. That's what makes me a stronger interviewer. So this year, I have a stack of books here on the art and craft of interviewing. I want to improve my writing skills. I definitely want to write more. And I signed up for a prestigious online journalism certification last year. I've hardly done any of it. But yet I waded through Facebook ad courses, copywriting. And I would ask you to reflect on 2020. You know, what did you sign up for? Where did you spend your time? And as you reflect, ask yourself, was it good? So in the case of Teresa Nemitz, 
in Milwaukee or Lauren in Oakland or Midgey in Juneau. Yeah, they launched box businesses and did phenomenally well. Ton of hard work, a lot of lessons. But for the rest of us, did we really learn new skills? Did we improve upon those skills that we're really going to need for when we do approach recovery? Especially things like Facebook ads, because I feel that if we want those local bookings for us as tour operators, that's an area where if I was selling tours locally, I would really want to focus on. You know, I was uh, saying to Peter Syme recently on an episode, an upcoming episode we have, I did a big spotlight on him and said, I've started cross-country skiing recently. A, I want to get fitter. B, Vermont is beautiful this time of year in the snow. And it's a brand new skill. It's not connected to the internet or my phone. Just get out there and do it. And I spent a fortune on this, right? The gear, the lessons. I ended up, they got me good salespeople, season pass. I'm talking four figures. That company has never advertised to me in my Facebook feed. I found out about them through an article in a newspaper. But where was the Facebook ads? Maybe had I seen that a couple of months previously, I would have signed up for that. Or the previous winter. You know, so I think there's a lot we can do with Facebook ads and copywriting. I am not saying that these are bad skills to have. What I'm saying is for your business, what's really important. So I've sacrificed a lot of things. I'm not doing the Facebook ad course. I'm not doing the video editing course, right? I have dropped German classes. I'm really sad about that because I love learning languages. I love learning German, but I, I couldn't do it justice. I was turning up for lessons every week for the Zoom classes and hadn't really, you know, I barely scraped through my homework, hadn't really spent time studying. What's the point? Sadly, the same with bass guitar lessons, because I was just finding that I wasn't really putting the time into that instrument either. So there are two things on the leisure side that I gave up, but I signed up for a course at Berkeley, the Advanced Media Institute, Storytelling with Sounds for Podcasts. We're on week five of that, thoroughly enjoying it. Whether I bring that into Torpreneur, I don't know. These are the kind of episodes that you hear on NPR or true crime podcasts with the atmospherics and the music and the sound effects. It's, it's such an art. I love learning all of that. And I would love to bring that into Torpreneur one day, but they do take a ton of work. But I've been working on that. I've uh, redoubled my effort on my journalism course. And something else I've been doing, and this takes time, is I'm listening. I always listen to interviewers, but the problem is, Let's say it's an interview um, about football, soccer, which I love. Am I really listening to the interviewer? Because if he or she is a good interviewer, the answers of the guests are going to be what I'm focusing on. And I'm not really taking in what the interviewer is asking. So now I'm listening to podcasts on things like gardening because <laughs> I have zero interest in gardening. But I want to listen to how the host interacts, how the host asks questions how the host uh, asks follow-up questions. What does the host do when they have a brain freeze? Because I get that. What does the host do when the guest doesn't open up? And I find by listening to episodes that I don't have an interest in, I'm really paying attention to the, the host and the interviewer. So I, I wanted to share that with you because Brian Chesky himself said two weeks ago that Brian Chesky, of course, uh, at Airbnb saying that 2021 was going to be a year of focus for them. And of course, that makes me wonder where that leaves experiences for Airbnb, but that's a discussion for another day. And actually, in terms of those discussions, we started the Travel Mavericks, uh, the Travel Industry Mavericks show last week. Got some interesting feedback on that. Got a quick message from one of our sponsors, and then we'll get right back to today's show. Stay tuned. Are you looking to upgrade to a booking platform that will allow you to increase sales? distribute your product more efficiently, and reduce operating costs, then you need to speak to Ventrata. Ventrata is a proven and versatile booking platform built for high-volume tours and attractions, and is trusted by Big Bus Tours, Historic Tours of America, RATP Group, City Sightseeing, and many more to power all their sales channels globally. They have a comprehensive platform that will allow you to manage and view live sales information from multiple channels in a single dashboard. Right now, Ventrata are offering a special pandemic recovery setup and payment plan to any business that books a demo before the 19th of March. For more, go to ventrata.com forward slash tourpreneur. 
I know we had an, is- an issue with Christian's mic, which we just fixed. And some of you said, yeah, I like the idea, I wasn't interested in the topic. And that's cool because uh, you know yourself as, as a experience provider, what you do is not for everybody. And I recognize that not every episode of Torpreneur is going to jive with, with you. What I'm trying to do with the Mavericks thing, though, and I've, I've, there's a lot of responsibility on Peter and Christian because I've said, I want you to replicate the kind of conversations we have at the bar at the end of a day at WTM or Arrival or ITB. You know, we have these off the record kind of, you know, unfiltered conversations. That's what I want. I don't want a corporate talking head and not really saying much about the industry or too scared to. And that's one of the difficult things with the Tourpreneur podcast is a lot of the larger companies, those people are not going to say anything. Well, they just watch every word. And I get that. I totally understand it. I'm very fortunate. I don't have a boss. I don't have shareholders. I was laughing on an episode of how I built this recently. They interviewed the uh, CEO of Peloton, the bikes. And it was part of the resilience sessions that they're doing over there. And Foley, the CEO, said to, to Guy, he said, I can't answer that question in the same way I could have done two years ago, because then we were private. Now we're public. And I'm sorry, guy, I, I can't go there. I was like, yeah, that's, that's the difficult thing. When you interview these larger companies, there's a lot of responsibility. I get that. So with the Mavericks, what we're trying to do is have not controversy for controversy's sake, but just have really honest, in-depth, genuine, authentic discussions about things that are happening in the industry. Some months it's going to appeal to you. So maybe the discussion last week about OTAs, you're like, yeah, I don't really work with OTAs, not really interested in it. But next month it could be a discussion on virtual or discussion around pricing, for instance. So do let us know what topics you want to hear on the Maverick show. Also, I'm working on other features. One of the things that I'm going to be testing shortly, and I'm hoping to do this with Rob Woodford, is a a highlight, a tour highlight of the week, maybe, where we talk to someone about a particular tour. So he has a tour about Bridgerton, which I haven't watched, but I've read that it's it's a big hit. And he has a tour around that. Want to bring him on, have a chat about that tour. How did he set it up? How is he marketing it? How did he create it? How did he design it? What's the sales like? How is he dealing with it in COVID? 10 minute shows. And I don't know what frequency we'll do these. I would love to do them every week, but there's that focus thing again. I've got to focus on my craft. I've got to have time during the day to study interviewing and and writing. But I would love to do that where we have a 10 minute focus on a a particular tour, especially if it's a tour that's a little bit quirky or a little bit different. Because I think we all have 10 minutes in the day. Certainly I know when I'm doing my laundry or doing the dishes or just taking the dog out, you know, because it's minus 25 here in Vermont. We're not out that long. I can cram in a 10-minute podcast. But really, the the purpose of, or the reason for sharing this with you today is I really just wanted to talk about focus and to have you think about that as well. What do you want to have learned by the end of this year? And it may well be you need to narrow that down. So have a think about that, because that's what I'm doing here. I've, I've narrowed, I've, I've jettison so many courses, so many books that I've bought. And I'm like, yeah, I will get to them at some point. But for now, I want to be a better interviewer. I want to be a better writer. And then I will deliver you a better show. Something in my mailbag this week, but quite a lot of you asking about the Arrival Insider. I cannot give you an opinion at this stage. I tell you why they've just opened the doors. I got a membership because I'd registered for Phoenix. They're just getting started over there. So what I would say is if you're on the fence maybe give it a couple of weeks until they've actually put more content in there. I know what it's like as a content creator. It's a little bit chicken and egg. You need people to subscribe to go get the content. I will definitely report back on you as things start moving on there. I know they've got a self-guided masterclass coming up that I hope to attend. I will report back. And as is always the case, I will give you my honest, unfiltered opinion of that. As much as I love Team Arrival and what they do, you can rely on Torpreneur for giving you an honest opinion. I'm looking at ITB registration. Okay, it's only 99 bucks, but I ask myself again, there's this focus thing. That's a day. Am I going to learn anything new? Is that information just going to be rehashed? Has enough happened since arrival last year, arrival 360? to warrant the investment and the time. There's one coming up with Skift on online distribution. And I'd love to attend all of these things. But again, that takes time away from producing Torpreneur. 
and working on my craft of interviewing. So I hope you have a great week. I hope you're making a plan to have a great week because right now during the pandemic, great weeks don't really happen by accident. I'll share with you that in a couple of hours time, I will sit down, I'll write out my goals for the week of what I want to achieve each day. And maybe I should talk about this more in depth. I don't know. Does this, <laughs> this might bore you guys how the sausage is made, but I make a plan every single night of what I want to achieve the next day. And I've been reading this book by Cal, Professor Cal Newport, called, yeah, Cal Newport, called Deep Work. And honestly, I think it's well written. It's 300 pages long and I'm early into it. And I think the 300 pages are basically going to say, carve out time for projects, switch off your phone, shut down social, close your door, do not disturb sign and crack on. Like we used to do in the old days, for those of you who are my age and above. Now I get very distracted by social, of course, running the, the Facebook group. I get messages constantly. I love it. But there are times when I just have to switch it off and work on an article or work on research. And I, what I've started to do actually two weeks ago because of this book, I actually, for each hour of the day, talk about what I want to do and what I want to cover. And I've been trying to focus on that and really stick to that schedule. And I will say that I'm only checking my email twice a day. I'm not checking my phone as much. And I am I would say my results over the last two weeks have, have been superior to what they were in the past. Whether I can sustain that, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, that that's working for me currently. It's really tough to switch off that social media and email and, and focus. And, you know, I just got an email from Kelsey Tonner very kindly inviting me to join him on Clubhouse. And, he, and I'm like, no, you know what? Sweet John also sent me an email for Clubhouse. I'm sure it's great. I'm sure it's fantastic. But again, I'm having to say to myself, if I get on that, is it going to be another distraction? Now, that's not to say that Clubhouse couldn't be useful for the tourpreneur business. Maybe it will, but right now I have a ton of work ahead of me in terms of interviews, episodes to prepare, content to plan. Is Clubhouse going to be a positive distraction or not? Right now I'm deciding that I don't even want to go near there. And these are the decisions we have to make when it comes to focus. So I wish you all a fantastic week. As always, you can email me, shane at tourpreneur.com with any feedback, observations, comments, especially around content that you want to hear on the show. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Tourpreneur podcast. Be sure to visit tourpreneur.com to join the conversation and access the show notes, including links to the resources mentioned on today's episode. This is Tourpreneur.